People's Bank of China put the digital yuan usage in cash circulation, circulation statistics for the first time. We're talking about CBDCs. China has been the most advanced on the CBDC conversation. It's just a minuscule fraction of what cash is being circulated in China at present, but that will change soon, I'm sure. Let's talk about CBDCs. They've been contentious within the crypto world for some of their privacy implications and whatnot, but we're going to talk about this one because they are ahead of the curve over in China as it relates to CBDC circulation as evidenced by this data. Jen, I'm tossing it to you. What do you think about this? Okay, so we all know that I'm not a huge fan of CBTCs because of the privacy implication. I, when I was reading the story, I was just kind of reflecting on, I've visited China twice, and out of all the countries I visited, it is not surprising that the Chinese citizens are adopting and accepting CBDCs. So the last time I was there, I've said this on the show before, you know, you couldn't even use a credit card in a, in a lot of the stores. It was all based on, on like paying with your WeChat app, couldn't really use cash. A lot of vendors are just like, no, we just use WeChat. And so it's already been very digital, like the user experience is already there. And so I'm not surprised that, that the um, Chinese are slowly adopting CBDCs. Next, can we just talk about <laughs> the amazing marketing campaign that the Chinese government has put out to to get more people to use the CBDC this Chinese New Year. So a Chinese New Year, Chinese gift money in their um, red envelope, and now there's a digital version of the red envelope that you can gift the CBDC to people. You can also pool your funds together, and then you know you and your friends get a random amount. It's kind of a fun gamified experience. And so I'll just say, I don't like CBDCs. I, th I don't know if it's going to be used for good in China, but the marketing campaign, wow. I was surprised to read that. Zach? Yeah, that is smooth. I like that. And you know what? I'm warming to CM CBDCs. Like CBDCs, if you could like do like proper tax accounting for me, like just through my CBDC. I would love that I'm too. I'm done. That'd be great. Okay, wow. You guys got me on that too. Zach's just going to be properly Zach's just taxed. Just gonna just take it. I'm warming to these things. Yum, yum. I don't even feel like traditional cash or whatever, dude. Just give me a CBDC, figure out my stuff for me, take my taxes, let me go my way. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You can have your cut government state government take it let me get some of this digital dollar action or you know for now we just have the we have this thing but i'll toss it to wendy she's a she hates she hates the cbdc so somebody do, had but you know what zach you kind of you kind of you kind of got me i paid like 20 grand to get my taxes filed for 2021 i'm so scared yeah. to see what it's going to cost this year so if it's automatically done for me with this stupid stupid um communism CD, cbdc i'm with it i'm with it What's just kidding that's how they get you that's how they get you wendy's <laughs> The red envelope, the tax filings. You see marketing? You all, what is this? Freedom money. I thought it works for CBDCs now. And you guys you know are going what? for convenience out here? <laughs> convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I choose all right. convenience. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I will say CBDCs are absolutely terrible. I hate them, but I just had a, I had a moment of weakness. I'm a woman. I'm emotional. Just let me be. Let me be, okay? But in reality, like to me, it's just wild to see China just pushing through the CBDC, like absolutely slaying it in every single aspect. And the United States just cannot figure out what they want to do. In the United States, we literally want to ban gas stoves. We literally care about banning gas stoves <laughs> instead of working on a CBDC in the United States of America or whatever it is we're doing. So it just kind of tells you where the priority are and um, China is going to end up um, becoming the um, up here with it. Sorry. <laughs> up here. No, I like it. Up here. The up here. Uh, okay, let's look at the data a little bit because this is this is an interesting story <laughs> Will, from a data said. perspective. We need to take it back. You guys need to stop praising this this communist money. Let's talk about the data. So point one three percent of all their outstanding cash cash balances for uh, the Chinese, I guess monetary regime here. If we look at the total amount of stable coins in circulation, according to Coin Market Cap, it's about one hundred thirty-eight billion, and the cash on hand from the uh, Chinese yuan CBDC is about two billion. So if you look at the percentages or the the total cash amount in stable coins from the Chinese government versus the total stable coin market, it's actually like not very far off, right? Like we could see a world in a year from now or two years from now where those markets are actually competing right now. Stable coins in the US or in Western countries and crypto are predominantly made by private companies. So they have a pretty 
low upper limit of how big they're going to be. Tether was the biggest this last cycle. I don't know the total figure, but I think it got into like a 300 billions in total circulation for market cap. And uh, competitors like Circle also got pretty big up there. But a government getting into this could actually balloon that figure quite fast. They really think that is a good implementation and if people like it. So if people really like those red cards, Jen, then yes, we could see stable coins getting pretty big.